I am in front of Slick Disc. This is in Trenton, Michigan, south of Detroit. I mean, as I was coming down here, I thought, holy crap, where am I at? It's really industrial. And here's Slick Disc. This has been around for 31 years. They survived all the trauma. And the gentleman that started it, he was 20 years old when he began this record store and still has it. He wasn't in today, but his mom was. And I had a great talk with his mom. Nice person. So it's a busy road, as you can hear, which is great. That's what um, gets people excited. So let's go take a look and see what we can find at Slick Disc Records. week let's start with slick slick disc records in trenton uh, michigan so this was a store i really didn't know about and you know searching i think someone mentioned i read something on facebook on uh, in michigan record club about it so i went out and i went looking for it i was down working in the southern part of detroit it took a little while to find it but it's been there for a very long time, so obviously the location's been good. It made it through the the death of vinyl, the resurgence through COVID. So great job. A uh, really nice little store, you know, compact, easy to get around and find what you want and not be overwhelmed. You know, the ceiling was filled with T-shirts. So a uh, very, very nice visit. It's always fun to find these, you know, little stores and see what kind of stuff you can find, what little gems of records might be in there. So slick disc down in Trenton. For those in Michigan, it's well worth taking a little 
jot, you know, down there and um, see what you can find. So now let's get into some records and bring them back into my collection. Stuff I used to have before the flood and now I have brought back and really got some good ones. Some ones that I've been needing to get in. But it, it, like anything else, you, know, you can only buy so much. You can only get in so much at a time. But really excited to bring these back. So let's just get right into it. And the first one is Purple Rain by Prince probably have heard of him very purpley kind of guy i hadn't had this back in and you talk about a kick of a classic album here it does come with the poster and that sometimes is very hard to find so really quite excited to see prince and the revolution there on that poster so this came out in 1984. It really, he took his funk and his R&B and kind of consolidated it and, and moved it into more pop and rock. And all that became part of his music. And of course, this soundtrack. I mean, we all know how great the soundtrack did. The movie did well. I did not see the movie when it came out. And I was living in Minneapolis. You would have thought, hey, man, you would have went to see that. But... You know, I was more Uskadu and replacement. So I really liked the time. So I it was just great. You have songs like, you know, When Doves Cry. And if you listen to When Doves Cry, there's 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 no bass playing. I mean, who does that? Just there's no bass. Let's go crazies on here. Kind of like a Neil Syke song with this these metallic guitars. I mean, it's filled with stonesy type riffs and just hard funk back beat happening uh you know the the revolution it really gave this album this sharp aggressive edge it just put it over the top I, you, you could say you know every, every every song's a winner on here so much good stuff it really made a name for prince as everybody knows and you know helped move him on to bigger things except for a movie career because that next one whatever i can't think of its name i guess under under the cherry moon is that right i think that was right i it i guess it sucked i didn't bother going to go see it so i i don't know but this here was like you know his life starting up so great to have that back in the collection also so speaking of prince we got sign of the times and this is his 1987 album that brought back in. Here are the inner sleeves. Very nice. And lots of words. So, Sign of the Times. This is the first album he did without the revolution. So it was something really kind of different. Uh, yeah, I guess you could kind of call it a fearless, chaotic double album. There's some great stuff, and like all double albums, I think there's some stuff that's not so great. It was electro-funk with smooth soul, along with some psych pop, and, it, and, then, and then he just sprinkled in. If you listen, there's a sprinkling of gospel and blues and folk. It's all in there. It's, he just let, let's let's do a little something of everything. Uh, you know, it's just some some of the songs are you know, I, it, it it can be very depressing. You know, there's about drugs and there's songs about AIDS in here and homelessness and abandoned babies and mothers. He sings about all that. It's the sign of the times. But he also sings about hope, about God, uh, and about love, and about just hanging on. So he tries to go both sides. But really, I mean, it does have, of course, Sign of the Times is on here. If I Was Your Girlfriend, which is just an incredibly good song. Uh, and, and, and plenty of other really good things. Uh, yeah, I was, I was happy to get this one in. I'm not the biggest Prince fan in the world. I like a lot of his stuff, especially, you know, the 80s more so. After that, I had all the CDs, but I don't have this desire that I need to get them back in again. But this was one, and, you know, that one, the other one there, um, Purple Rain, very important. These were really missing in my collection, and 
I was late to this group, but I brought in some cheap trick again. And I'm happy because I've wanted to, been trying to find it. You know, you know, obviously it's not like the greatest cover, but the price was good. And I just wanted to get the cheap trick in. I wish it had the real original inner sleeve on here. I, this was their debut album, came out in 1977, and it was like this explosion. It was like a fusion of Beatles type melodic hooks, uh, along with, you know, the Who power chords, and then they just put in their twisted sense of humor. Rick Nielsen is pretty incredible. He is a great songwriter, and he knew how to write and arrange quirky, fun and sometimes very irreverent songs. I mean, it really is pretty. You'd think of, you know, there was, what we got on here, some of these, uh, do, 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 where we are, where is, um, okay, da Daddy Should Have Stayed in High School. Daddy Should Stay, that, that song's about um, pedophile. <laughs> How about that? The Ballad of uh, TV Violence. Um uh, is 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 another one and it's about mass murder so here we go you know cheap tricks really getting deep here but they do it in such a way i it just like you know they just kind of poke fun at it power i mean this is just filled with these power hooks sheer volume is just it's just crazy i mean and just killer killer hooks with incredible humor, and yeah, there's there are some bizarre subjects. You know, your first album and what they come up with, but it's pure blissful power pop, and this is a great, what a great way to start off. Look how young they are, and you know, they're still out there, but uh, definitely do not look like that anymore. So, and when you get that first album, why not pick up the second album? So In Color from 1971 was their second album. Look how nice it looked. And I said, I did not jump on the cheap, cheap, trip, cheap trick bandwagon right away. No, no inner sleep, no original. Uh, my little brother, my little brother in college in 79 bought, uh, you know, um, Live Live at Budokan. Or was it 80? Probably 80 he bought that. And it was, you know, I was like, okay. But he really got into Cheap Trick. Eventually, I fell into that. I mean, it's like, God, these guys are really, really good. And and I do like them, you know, their 70s up, up to Dream Police. After Dream Police, I'm not a huge fan of them. But this one came out in 77. It had, um, it was more of a shiny rock okay they really polish things up the first one was just kind of here we are we're in your face this one okay they started they had a producer trying to make it cooler they have the i want you to want me which is just a bubblegum sing-along i <laughs> pure pure pop bliss uh downs on here which was a kind of a druggy psychotic um so, i mean Nah, nah, a, a druggy psychedelic type song interesting stuff there's southern girls which was their ode to beach boys california girls their perversive sense of humor is all over this thing i mean it's a big part of it you'll see a lot of this octave uh radio wasteland they got a octave was a dj and he had this inside a furniture store. There's this huge collection. And he had all these records. And he took really good care of them. Very good care. Again, a DJ. But, you know, he was a DJ. So he put Octave on all of them. And so I have a lot of... I have the Octave collection, I like to say. I got quite a few. So that was their second album. But... You know what, if you're going to get first and second, well, why not just get the third? And I think that's pretty much what I need now to fill because I have the other stuff. So here we got Heaven Tonight, 1978. That's in color was also from 77. Uh, this is just like slamming heavy metal power pop with hard rock. I mean, happening on here. I mean, it's ferocious. Just ferocious this album it is so much fun most of you have it you know it so it's like well dusty we already knew that but yeah well now you're hearing from me words and there they are looking as cool as ever rick nelson 
<laughs> oh god i think that's why i had a hard time ago kind of the guy's just so what's with him i mean that's a shtick okay of course this has surrender the famous song where parents are cooler than the kid surrender i mean that's just funnier than all get out on top of the world is on here which is just a roaring rocker i it just makes you get up out of your chair and just go nuts uh and you know of course you they took um from from the group the moves uh california man they play that on there and they just pulverize it I, it is darn good this this album rocks and it rocks hard i i just wow what what great stuff i ain't taking me back on the radio have heaven tonight love that song yeah so first three cheap trick this was a neat one this was from the bill young collection and you know houses of the holy there's an ob strip but it's from the uk this was one that came out in 2014 and it has a second LP that has um, remixes. It has some of the, it, it has some of the uh, songs with just certain instruments on it. So it's it's an interesting look at Houses of the Holy with extra material. So you have your regular albums done on one hundred and eighty gram vinyl, but they add more to it. And so Bill Young had this and is looking at it and thought you know what and first off because you know bill young was you know a good friend and you know by buying it it supports his wife his radio wasteland's been selling that he won't make any kind of deals on the bill young collection because the money goes directly to bill's wife so it's always exciting to buy something from it so houses of the holy yeah it's not my favorite zeppelin album but it's cool to get some of this extra stuff just to hear what it is. And again, it's the person behind the album that's really important to me. Then we went to this. Again, bought up my local radio wasteland. Uh, Leonard Skinner's Gold and Platinum. I like Leonard Skinner. I've liked them for, you know, forever, I guess. But the thing is, I only have so much room. So I don't want to buy all the Leonard Skinner albums so I could have the hits. Why not buy this? And now I have the hits. Wow, it really worked out. And so, yeah, why that that is why we got this. It's a two LP set, no inner sleeves or anything in there, but. It gives me all the Leonard Skinner and I need. I put it on. I have all the best stuff, the fun stuff that I want to hear, the stuff that I'm going to sing along to. And sure, I'm missing some great deep tracks. It's okay. This one takes the place. It's like one album. Well, two, quite honestly. So nice to have that back into enjoy Leonard Skinner. And the final one, actually, I had original vinyl. This is Thomas Dolby. And this is Thomas Dolby's second album. Let me get, I said I had my, I saved the original. So I finally went out and just, I bought it on Discogs. I mean, it's fairly inexpensive. I just ha don't see it come up that often. So happy to get it. It did have nice inner sleeve. So his second album, was it as good as she blinded me? It's a science, uh, you know, uh, I mean, wireless, the golden age of wireless. I, I, I think it's a great album. I, I think it's really, really good. This had the great song, Hyperactive. I love Hyperactive. It's my favorite Thomas Dolby song. I, I just think it's wonderful. It's fast-paced. It's exciting. And, it, and so, basically, I bought it because it has it. The rest of the album's good. Very good. I don't have any complaints about this. Obviously, I saved that vinyl for a reason probably because I wanted hyperactive, but it was just, why not get this thing in? And so I really was happy to. This came out in 1986, which is a series I'm working on, 1986 now, uh, my favorite albums. Possibly this could be in it. So happy to have it. So there we go. That's it. That's what I brought back in my collection. Actually, there's some more stuff, but in a, trying to keep it shorter. So 
I hope you enjoyed it. Appreciate you taking time to watch. Don't forget to check out Slick Dicks Records and drop by and see me on Sunday on the Early Morning Sunday Show. Bye.